There's a great story um, that I heard years ago um, that's about a man who just would not quit his job regardless of how bad it got. I don't know if you've seen the movie Something the Lord Made, but it basically details that um, the procedure that these two guys develop way back in the 1930s and 1940s. Um, so basically they develop a BT shunt which is a procedure that we use to help kids that have a congenital heart disease to allow them to kind of uh, make it a little bit longer because it's hard to do a surgery on a beating heart, obviously. So the two guys that worked on this were um, Dr. Blaylock and Vivian Thomas. And so they worked for years on perfecting the procedure and, and doing it on different animals and stuff. And the doctor said that Vivian Thomas was so good at doing the stitches that it was basically like something the Lord had made. I always thought that was such a good line. So anyway, these two guys are working on it and they finally get a patient that they're gonna try the procedure on. And the procedure, um, the patient is from Dr. Tossig. So the shunt actually gets named for Dr. Blaylock and Dr. Tossig. Do you see the problem? So Vivian Thomas has worked for years on this procedure but he's not actually included in the naming of the shunt. He literally gets completely forgotten. He doesn't get acknowledged. And to be fair, this is um, back in the 30s and 40s and Vivian Thomas is a black man, right? So it's not like he's, he's not getting paid well. He's not allowed to become a doctor. He's not, he's literally ostracized to certain parts of the hospital. There's a lot going on. And it's not like he can just get up and go get another job. Um, it's a very hard time for him. So he decides to stay where he is and can, he continues to work and continues to do his best with where he is. And I've thought about this a lot since then because honestly, I don't know if I would have stayed. I mean, would you have stayed in a place where you weren't being acknowledged or doing all this work and instead of getting any kind of recognition for it, you're completely forgotten? See, the interesting thing, I think more than once in my career, I've been very frustrated by lack of personal success. Or if you're in training, you probably experienced this as well, right? It's, it's hard to stand out in a way um, that, is, that, that makes you look good, especially if you're still kind of trying to learn things. Um, for me, I had brain damage, and so I had to kind of work through residency, and I was a little bit at a disadvantage. It's not like I was resident of the week every week. Um, but I kind of had to keep, but I kind of made the decision to stay and to keep working on it as opposed to leaving medicine, even though some people encouraged me to do so. And I just kept thinking about the fact that success in God's eyes just plain doesn't look like success in the world's eyes. And I think that's a lot of what kind of got me through that uneasy time because Success for God was taking a murderer with a speech impediment and somehow making him the leader of a million people. And that's what happened with Moses. True success was God with a man having everything, having it all taken away because the devil wanted to test him with Job, right? And then true success for God was his own son giving up his life um, instead of like doing a revolution and saving Israel. It's, instead, he died on a heinous cross in Jesus. True success for God just plain doesn't look like true success to man. And sometimes, honestly, I think it just looks like defeat. And it's hard because for most of those stories, I stopped in the middle. I stopped in the part where it gets the hardest and it looks the most impossible and it feels the most frustrating. You just plain cannot see anything ever working out for any good. And it's hard to keep going and hard to keep walking forward without acknowledgement or without success or without the things that you have hoped to see in your life. But God defines success as faithful obedience, meaning that if you're there and you're working and you're giving your best, that is success to God. And more than that, God knows the way that I take. Job tells us, um, when he has tested me, he, he, we will come out pure as gold. And that doesn't always mean that we will come out successful with a handful of gold, but it means that the work that we do and the things that, that we've done and the heart that we've had, God acknowledges as worth more than anything else. But 
I love the end of the story. Not, it's not in the movie, I guess, but the very end of the story is that Vivian Thomas actually does get recognized for being part of the creation of the BT shunt. But it's 40 years later. They do a big ceremony and they like have all these things and like write up this big story about him. But gosh, I really wonder sometimes, did it feel worth it to him? And I think what I would have had to do in his position is really hold on to something besides the accolades, besides getting the shunt named after you, besides what people are going to say about you and how many times your name is written in the paper. I think he really had to hold on to what God said was true about him, regardless of what was happening in his career. Right? And the only reason he got to see the benefit of staying is because he stayed. So what about for you? Will you stay? Will you continue to work diligently? Will you continue to trust that God has your best in mind even if it doesn't really look like that today. I hope you remember God sees what you're doing and you are not alone. Follow along here if you need more encouragement and want to hear some more great stories about who God is and what he says about your work. Have a good one.